752 East Oak Street in Kankakee. And we are operating this morning with a skeleton crew because we are trying to be mindful of the situation. But God's name is still worthy to be praised in all things. We are going through some trials, we're going through some tribulations, but the Lord told us that these days will come. So again, we thank God today for you tuning in as viewers on Facebook Live. We thank God for all that you're doing with us each and every moment. We want to encourage you during this time of uh, isolation to continue to keep faith in God, to continue to be supportive of the ministry and the Word of God in this place. And we just ask that you continue praying. We're asking that you check in on your neighbors, check in on your friends, because there are people that are going through isolation right now. Let them know, even if you can't go to them physically, call them up. Let somebody know that you care about them. Amen? Amen. Because we recognize that even in the time of trouble, God is still good. Amen? So at this time, we're going to ask our minister of music to grace us with a song, and then after that, we'll be ready to preach the word. Amen? Amen. So again, we are still in the mindset of worship. Even though we may not have numbers in the sanctuary, we recognize that God is still worthy to be praised. And we ask that you would please forgive some of the technical difficulties that are going on because we are doing this, first of all, live. And live is always fraught with different instances. But we want to thank God for those that are making it possible that we can get this live stream out. And as we work through some of our problems, work through our difficulties, God will still have his hands on everyone who say amen.
Psalms 91, verses 5 and 6. The 91st number of Psalms, All right. verses 5 and 6. It reads thus then, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. I just want to talk for a few minutes this morning about facing what we fear. All right. Facing right. What, what we fear. We fear. Now, this is just an observation. This is just a simple observation that as much as we as a people complain and grumble about the boredom of repetitive routines, I've discovered for the most part, most of us really don't adapt well when something comes along in our lives that disrupts our boring and repetitive routines. All right. <laughs> because when something takes us out of our routine, it throws us literally into a tailspin. Uh -huh. And that is what has happened with the advent of coronavirus, COVID-19. It has thrown off everything right. that we normally have viewed as normal and natural within our lives. We have been baptized with the fires of uncertainty and doubt. The rhythm of our daily routine has been dramatically upset. Our normal, boring lives have been thrown a curveball. Right. We have witnessed a government that seems inadequate to the challenge. Yep. We've seen the medical community scrambling, trying to make a way out of seemingly no way. Uh -huh. Attitudes across this country have drifted from denial to ambivalence to start raving panic. Right. We've seen the results of panic and beat, rushing and hoarding items like food, water, rubbing alcohol, bandages, disinfectants, hand wipes, hand sanitizers. We've even seen the absurdity of everybody trying to stockpile on paper towels and toilet paper. Uh -huh. We have watched as the economic engine that has driven our society has ground slowly to a halt. The atmosphere that has made the United States of America the envy of the world has crumbled and decayed to the point of grown folks in stores fighting one another like cats and dogs mm. over a roll of toilet paper. Right. All of these actions, all of these things have one thing in common. They are all firmly rooted in the domain of the spirit of fear. Right. Now I've often heard it quoted, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh -huh. right. But some of the statements that have been made, some of the actions that are coming from people, not only on the outside, but even within the community of faith, have sounded like people who are not showing a sound mind. Mm. The psalmist says here in this text, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Right, right. The world of the time of this text was vastly different than the world we have right now. That's right. Because nighttime back in those days was a lot different from what we experience now. Because even on the darkest of nights, we have the advantage of millions of watts of artificial light. Yes. But during the time before all of these lights existed, dark was dark. Yeah. <laughs> Predatory animals could hunt in the nighttime. Mm -hmm. Adversaries could creep in on your camp and be undetected in the nighttime. Right. The virus that we're dealing with right now has presented us with a terror by night. Yes. It's a terror we cannot see. It's a terror we cannot number. We cannot contain this thing. And only God knows how long before, if ever, we can defeat this. Right. Mm -hmm. 
But we have to remember we're not the only people going through this thing. Right. For a lot of other people are dealing with these types of issues. A lot of other people are dealing with these kinds of concerns. It's easy for us many times when we read these types of things to blow it off and put it on somebody in the Bible days, but not somebody like us. Right. It's easy to disconnect and think that they're only talking about something that's not relevant to our modern world. It's easy for us to rationalize this when the suffering and hardship seems to be some other nation, some other state, some other group, some other place. It's easily when we can mentally pawn this thing off as being somebody else. Mm. But the fact of the matter is this go round is talking about us. Yes. People that look like you, act like you, sound like you. Not in some far off country, not in some far removed town. Time is not in India, Africa, Afghanistan, or some other far, far flung part of the planet. It's us. Yes, sir. This is our burden to bear. This is our time to go through. We're the ones facing the terror of sickness and death. We're the ones that are dealing with a pestilence during our time. We're the ones facing changes in our lives, our routines, and our actions. Someone once said God gave us faith to move mountains because he knew that someday we would face some mountains. Yes, sir. We're facing a mountain with this pandemic. But the world has endured mountains before. We've endured SARS, we've gone through Ebola, Zika, cholera, the flu pandemics of both 1968 as well as 1918. We've dealt with HIV and AIDS. The church has endured these kinds of things before. The world has gone through these kinds of things before. The only difference right now is we're not reading about it as history. We're experiencing it per se. Yes, sir. And this is our new reality. This is causing anxiety. This is causing and fueling our fears. We're not spectators, but we're unwilling participants that are caught in a nightmare. Yeah. We've been isolated from many of the concerns of the world before. We've been isolated from being a part of these things. We've lived in relative comfort. We've taken for granted the blessed lives we've been lead, uh, allowed to lead. And now we stand eyeball to eyeball with something ugly, something frightening, something that has real world ramifications. Yes. And for many people, the response has been fear. Yes. Terror. And the fear has changed how we act. The fear has changed how we respond. Fear has literally changed how we worship. And whether this lasts for the next six days, six weeks, six months, or six years, we don't know. But worship is not about a formula. Right. It's not about an address. It's not about a set of circumstances that control what's right in worship and what's wrong in worship. It's not about protocols and procedures. How we've done church in the past is going to change. How we've done church has always been about what made a group of people, a congregation, comfortable. Yeah. It's a matter of personal style, a matter of personal preference. But the reality is not in the how we worship, but the who we worship. Yeah, yeah. The psalmist suggests within this text that calamities can come upon us quickly, unexpectedly, without warning. Mm -hmm. We are fighting right now against an enemy that you cannot grab. Right. You can't build towers, you can't erect fortresses to hide behind. That's right. This is a terror that does not respect borders, doesn't require a passport to get in. It's not Chinese, it's not Asian, it's not Korean, it's for any other nationality. It simply is a virus that is communicated when people get together. Right. We have to change what we've been doing. It can be passed with a hug or a kiss. It can be passed with a handshake or a cough. We're dealing with an adversary that has the capacity to kill people that have pre-existing medical issues. Yes. 
the old and those who are already suffering through previous illnesses. It moves swiftly and effectively to weaken our people. And so we react by taking precautions. We're also not to respond by being afraid. We're not to be afraid because we have a God on our side. Yes. We have a God that says that even in the time of trouble, I'll be with you. Yes. We have a God that tells us to stand on the faith that knowing that the Lord is with us. But having faith does not mean you're supposed to be stupid. Mm. Well. <laughs> I have faith that the Lord can keep me, but that don't mean I go outside and play a trap. That's right. I have faith, but I wear a seatbelt in my car. Yes. I have faith, but I have a lock that's on my door. Yes. In the Bible, Elijah had faith in God, but he also had the good sense to listen when the Lord told him to run from Jezebel. Yes. Because she's trying to kill him. <laughs> Joseph listened to the Lord when he was told to take his wife and child and flee into Egypt to avoid Herod trying to kill the Christ child. Right. right. In the book of Acts, Paul was repeatedly warned by intervention of the Holy Spirit not to go to the city of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He didn't listen. And although the Lord stayed with him, although the Lord kept his hands on him, his failure to listen cost him his freedom and eventually cost him his life. Right. Sometimes people of faith need to also be people who will listen to the warnings. Yes. Having faith means you respond intelligently to your fears. Yes. My brothers and sisters, throughout history, it is not unbelief that has crippled the church. It is fear. Mm. Fear will make you doubt. Fear will lead you to some bad choices. God. Fear will bring you to the brink of despair. Fear will shake you to the bottom of your soul. Yes. But the writer here tells us not to be afraid. All right. Not to fear the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day. Not to fear the pestilence, in our case, is caused by a virus, or to fear the destruction that wastes away the noonday. We ought to take precautions, but we're not to live in fear. Right. right. We ought to be careful, but we're not supposed to be afraid. Many people have already been exposed, but even then, you're not supposed to be afraid. I believe that we will always face evil tidings. I believe that we'll always have to deal with bad news. Uh -huh. I believe we'll always have to face some hardships. But I trust that the Lord will see us through. Yes, sir. Right. No matter how dark the sky becomes, uh -huh. no matter how bright the lightning may flash, yes. no matter how the thunder may roar, right. no matter how much rain falls in the midst of a storm, it doesn't matter how bad a storm might seem. Come on, Doc. We still have assurance that no matter how bad the storm is, the storm will pass over. Yeah, yeah. Rain does not last forever. Lightning does not flash forever. Yes, sir. Thunder does not roll forever. That's the lesson we learn from Calvary. Yes, sir. It doesn't matter how dark Friday was. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter how bad Friday became. We have the assurance that after the death on Friday, Sunday morning is on the way. Yes, sir. COVID-19 might represent a Friday.
be over. But God is going to take us through this thing. Don't be afraid. Even if we can't get together, God is still in the midst. Yes. And that's what we need to lean on and depend on. Now, some of us will really understand why it is that they've been teaching Sunday school classes and teaching Bible study classes and trying to equip people to get ready because there's a time that, y'all, you may not be able to gather at your local house of worship. But God ought to be on the inside yeah, yeah. of every one of us. Amen. 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 We thank God once again. We've asked those that are members of this church, those that are friends of this church, those that are supporters of this church. There are uh, uh, buttons on the Facebook page for Cash App, for Giftify, and uh, also just for letting somebody know that you have money at home and we'll make arrangements some kind of way to make sure that somebody will get there to pick it up. We ask that you will be supportive of this church and not only this church, all the churches that stand open. If you're not a member of this church and your church is unable to stream, I would ask if you can support this church, but I would ask also that you are supportive of your own church. Amen. Amen. Because again, even though you can't get to the building, God doesn't live in the building. God resides in the hearts and minds of those who have committed their lives to him. Amen? Amen. Again, I want to thank those that are and our production staff that have made today possible. Thank God for all of those that are working behind the scenes. And I would encourage everybody to continue in prayer during this time. Look in on elderly people. Look in on aunts and uncles, mothers of the church. Patrons of the church, patriarchs of your family, look in on somebody, check on somebody, care about somebody. Even if you can't embrace them, let them know that you care. Amen? Amen. This is a challenging time, but I believe that God has equipped us for this challenge. Amen. And I will continue to urge those of you that are part of this church, we intend to keep the, the live stream going as long as we possibly can. Amen? Amen. So I would ask that you will be supportive in any way possible as we move forward. Tune in next week at 1030 also as we are endeavoring to continue this. We're also going to be trying to plan on getting this posted up onto YouTube and other platforms. And, and even on today, we, we are aware of the fact that a lot of churches are doing this. The platforms may crash along the way, but continue to support the, the message of the Word of God as it goes forth. Again, I thank God for each and every one of you, and on behalf of the Zion family, I thank you for taking the time to 